Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, today we are going to be making a compound, potassium hydroxide, which is not easily available in all countries. In Canada, it's very difficult to find. You can buy it on eBay, but it's rather expensive, so I thought we'd go ahead and try to make our own. So, in a previous video, we made a bit of uh, potassium carbonate, um, and this is just a bit of it, it's not all of it that we made, because I'm saving some for a separate process where we make uh, potassium hydroxide also, uh, but a different method. Um, and this is just 4 grams here. Um, so this is nice pure white powdered potassium hydroxide, which we extracted, or well, actually synthesized from um, potassium bitartrate, which is cream of tartar. You can see that video if you want to see how to do that. Now, it's fairly simple to make potassium hydroxide using a simple displacement reaction. So we're only going to need two chemicals, potassium hydroxide and this nice um, calcium hydroxide. Or not potassium hydroxide, potassium carbonate and calcium hydroxide. Now, this calcium hydroxide was also made in a previous video um, from some other very simple household materials. So, we're going to start by taking a fair amount. This is, it doesn't really matter the exact ratio. We're just going to take some distilled water, make sure it's very pure distilled water, and add some calcium hydroxide into it. Now, calcium hydroxide partly dissolves in water, um, forming calcium and hydroxide ions in the water, forming a very basic solution. But it's not extremely soluble in water. So we're going to add an excess, try to get as much to dissolve as possible, then filter it off through a coffee filter through this funnel into our beaker here. Now this beaker looks dirty, but it's actually not. The sides of it got etched because I had a uh, um, sodium hydroxide solution, which I boiled down in here. So the sides are slightly etched, but that won't matter. Anyhow, and then once that's done, then we can dump in our pure potassium carbonate, which will do the displacement reaction. And um, after leaving it for a while, we should be left with potassium carbon or uh, uh, calcium carbonate, which precipitates out a solution, and potassium hydroxide in solution. That's the theory behind it. Oh, wait, sorry, the phone was ringing. I just uh, okay. Anyhow, so first step we're gonna do is simply take some of our nice uh, our uh, calcium hydroxide here and just pour it into our. Just put in a few little pieces into our uh, round bottom flask, um, with a flat bottom of course, so it will stand. Um, you can use any sort of um, carrying device, even something like, uh, I don't know, something like a um, canning jar or something. Anyhow, so we're just going to swirl this around and make as much dissolve as we possibly can. When as much as dissolved as we possibly can, we'll take a piece of coffee filter, put the coffee filter in here, and filter our solution through the coffee filter into this beaker. The um, excess calcium carb uh, hydroxide can then be dried and re-added to our uh, a little vial here for future runs. Anyhow, so I'll make sure to swirl this around and create a nice and concentrated solution. Okay, so I uh, put it in and I used a chopstick to mush it up so that um, it would break apart and dissolve easier. Now, calcium hydroxide only dissolves in um, uh, 0.2 grams of calcium hydroxide will dissolve in about 100 milliliters water at 0 degrees Celsius and as the temperature increases the solubility decreases. We also have to use distilled water because um, any basic solutions rapidly decrease the solubility of um, uh, calcium hydroxide. Anyhow, what we formed here as you can see is a suspension. Um, so what I've done is I mush it up really fine so that it would hopefully dissolve a bunch but we formed a suspension which is known as milk of lime. Um, anyhow, this will hopefully also work because the more calcium hydroxide we have, the more we'll react with our potassium carbonate here. The reason I don't really like this method and the method I'll be showing in the future is more efficient is because it's so difficult to get enough calcium hydroxide to dissolve to do this in any reasonable, um, on any reasonable scale. So, um, anyhow, that's okay because, uh, we'll try this out. Um, I also might add a bit more water just to get more of the stuff to dissolve, but, um, if it doesn't, that's fine. Um, anyhow, so we'll take a coffee filter, put it in our funnel, and filter it off. Okay, so after that, you can see that we're left with a nice, um, murky solution, but much clearer solution of, um, potassium hydroxide and also a suspension of it. Now, um, the next, um, thing to do is going to be to simply take our potassium carbonate here and add a little bit to our solution. Now, I don't want to add all of it in case something bad ends up happening, but, um, a displacement reaction should now be occurring. And, ooh, this is excellent. You can see how cloudy that got? That's because the displacement reaction just caused um, calcium carbonate to precipitate out a solution which is insoluble in water. There's no solubility of calcium carbonate. 
So, um, I actually might go ahead and add a bit more of this, uh, potassium carbonate. And we might as well add the rest because we still have more to use in future runs. Anyhow, so now we go ahead and mix this around and let it sit to hopefully let the full displacement reaction occur. So I'll meet you back when that's been done. Okay, so just after about five minutes, you can see we're forming a distinct layer on the bottom. And the, cal the fine particles of calcium carbonate seem to want to be floating to the top, although hopefully eventually they will sink. We should now have mainly potassium hydroxide in solution and the calcium carbonate precipitating out. Now, I'm very sure that not all the uh, potassium carbonate reacted with the calcium hydroxide. Well, it w all the hydro calcium hydroxide has gone, but I'm sure there's still potassium carbonate in solution. So after the full reaction occurs, we'll let this sit for a day or so. We'll filter it off and mix another solution of uh, calcium hydroxide. Then we'll uh, just put a bit of this solution into the calcium hydroxide solution. And if anything precipitates out, we know we still have potassium carbonate in this solution. So then we will repeat that um, to convert more of the carbonate to the hydroxide. And when no more, when we repeat the test, no more actually precipitates out, no more calcium carbonate, then we will know that we converted all of our potassium carbonate to potassium hydroxide. Anyhow, so we'll meet you back tomorrow, or sometime then, when we uh, have let this reaction sit for a fair amount of time. Okay, so this is quickly for both methods to produce uh, potassium hydroxide I've showed. You can see we have the potassium hydroxide from each method. And I'm just doing it at the same time because I want to save ethanol. So in a previous video we actually distilled some nice 95% pure ethanol. And we're going to be using this because potassium hydroxide is quite soluble in ethanol. However, potassium carbonate is essentially insoluble in ethanol. So that leaves us an excellent method to separate them because our potassium carbonate can simply be filtered off and our potassium hydroxide will be in solution and can be boiled down to obtain the pure potassium hydroxide. So weigh out some ethanol, or measure out some ethanol, and place in both of these potassium hydroxide samples. Okay, so as you can see, we now have a solution that's relatively clear with a bit of uh, grey gunk filth at the bottom. That's most likely impurities and potassium carbonate, as it's not soluble in ethanol. But most of it did dissolve, and that's all the potassium hydroxide which has now dissolved in this ethanol. It is important to use high purity 95 or 100% ethanol, just because potassium carbonate is very soluble in water. And if there is too much water present, we're going to get a lot of potassium carbonate contamination. So we can now quickly filter this off with a coffee filter or something, and then boil down off or boil off all the ethanol to obtain a nice pure potassium carbonate salt. So I'll do that and meet you right back. Okay, so you can see that now that after we boiled that down, we are left with some beautifully nice pure potassium hydroxide. And uh, this is quite pure because we have no potassium carbonate contamination. And uh, yeah, that's basically how to make potassium hydroxide from household materials. And it's not exactly efficient. Probably have about two grams or three grams here. Um, but it's enough to do some reactions if you just need a bit of potassium hydroxide. I highly go uh, recommend going ahead and uh, buying it online or something. You can buy several pounds of it for $20. Um, I mean, it's not super expensive by any means. But I guess it's fun to make it on your own. And if you'd like to try the ex experiment, then you could try either method. Um, because this, of course, this at the end of both videos is going to be exactly the same. They just originated from different points. Anyhow, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you in the future video. Bye!